so last time we chatted, we talked about a subject very near and dear to my heart, the subject of employee engagement. What I want to talk to you about today is the foundation of employee engagement. And I'm going to go further and tell you it's not just the foundation of employee engagement. It is the foundation of any high functioning relationship that you will have with another human being, whether that's personal, professional. And that foundation is embedded in a four letter word called trust. Uh, and you know, we can be, we can be cute talk about what trust means and doesn't mean, you know, in our currencies that we say in God, we trust. What I want to talk about is trust, especially in the professional environment, the environment of work, because it's something we don't talk about enough and we don't talk about it in the right way. If you think about some of my favorite authors, uh, hopefully some of your favorite authors, people like Patrick Lanchoni, uh, people like Stephen M. R. Covey, uh, people like Simon Sinek and others all talk about trust. You know, Simon Sinek talks about your why. Patrick Lanchoni talks about motive and the five dysfunctions of a team. And Stephen M. R. Covey, not to be confused with his father who wrote The Seven Habits of Everything, wrote one of the most brilliant books that I have ever read, and it's called The Speed of Trust. And in that book, he explores the fact that there are three levels of trust. The first level of trust is one that I think we're all familiar with. It's what he would call statutory trust. That is the trust we put in institutions, police officers, and doctors and teachers and things like that. You know, we give them that trust, it's embedded in an institution. The second level of trust has taken on a lot of meaning for people as well, and it's something that we have embraced aggressively in Western society, and that's what Covey calls knowledge-based trust. I'm really smart. Uh, you know, where you see that is, you know, I've seen people in my 45 years that have a resume, you know, that have a business card that is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper because they have to have all of their qualifications and certifications on it. And they're screaming, trust me, I'm really smart. And look at all these certifications I have to prove that I'm really smart and you should believe me. And that's an interesting phenomenon because in the business environment, people really believe that. Of course they should trust me. I have an MBA, a doctorate, fill in the blanks here on all the reasons that people should trust me. But it's the third level of trust that really matters. And that third level of trust is what Covey refers to as intimacy-based trust. That is trust based on shared experiences between people, between two people or more. And intimacy-based trust is incredibly important. And it's incredibly important, and it's also incredibly sad because I very rarely hear that being talked about in leadership programs. And I don't hear us teaching that in colleges, and I don't hear that teaching that in graduate school programs at all, but it really is the foundation. One of the greatest opportunities I've been given in my career is a few years ago, I had an opportunity to be a mentor coach to a group <clears throat> called the Honor Foundation. The Honor Foundation was founded about 10 years ago, working exclusively with people from our, the highest levels of our elite military units. They started with Navy SEALs. Because one of the sad things that they found is these individuals coming out of these elite military units, making a transition back into civilian life were really struggling. And so they put together a program to say, how do we get these elite people and get them in and make them successful? And one of the, the saddest conversations I have to have with these people is in their world, trust is everything. It is inherent to every relationship that they have and it is embedded that they trust each other intimacy-based trust, in explaining to them that that doesn't necessarily happen in the corporate environment was earth-shattering to them. You know, they just frankly asked me, well, how, how, do you, how do you be successful if you don't have trust as a foundation? And so trust is something that is very, very critical. In fact, it's critical enough that my partner and I, Jeff Hudson Searle from the UK, uh, last year in October published our book, The Trust Paradigm. And what we're trying to say to people there is trust is the foundation. Everything starts with trust. And we're not the only people to talk about trust. We're probably not even the smartest people to talk about trust. What we have tried to do is explain to people that if you do not understand that going into any relationship with the idea that first we build trust and only with that foundation of trust do we build anything else then you're probably not going to ever get to the place where you have employee engagement. And trust is hard. I can tell you that trust takes sometimes years to build and seconds to destroy. Trust is very, very important today, um, even more so than it has been in past generations. If you're not familiar with it, an interesting uh, barometer that is available is something called the Edelman Trust Barometer. The Edelman Trust Barometer was begun by a not-for-profit group based in Boston 
26 years ago. And they began measuring trust in four major institutions, media, non-government organizations, business, and the government. And the sad fact is over the last five or six years, what they've seen is consistency. The trust numbers have consistently gone down. Business of those four groups has the highest trust rating. And a sad thing is the highest of the trust ratings is at 46%. So do the math. That means 54% of people don't trust their business leadership. And, 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 we, and we in business won. So that means there's a lot of folks there. And if you take a look at where we're at today, I think it should be very evident to anybody that trust is in short supply. The other way that it's playing out, interestingly for me as a human resources guy, is for the first time in probably my career, for my 45 year career, we're starting to see unionization on the rise. For years, unionization had gone dormant. And I will tell you that in 2023, if you are seeing a unionizing campaign in your organization, there is one reason for that. And the reason for that is because your employees don't trust you. It isn't just about money, it's about the fact that they don't feel that they can trust you to look out for their interests. So trust is very, very, very important. And recognizing that trust is a gift, it is not an entitlement. And so we, you know, I talked a little bit about the, the fact that our leadership models in this country are poor. Uh, we rely on, you know, mechanics and, and, and measurements and all that really don't have anything to do. And we rely on transactions. If you're going to rely on transactions, that is what you're going to have is you're going to have a transactional relationship. Covey describes that and he says that every organization in the world, whether you're a government, whether you're a business, whether frankly you're in a romantic relationship, you are either earning a trust dividend or you are paying a trust tax. If you remember from my last podcast where we talked about the employment, the employee engagement, when we talked about the, the five trillion dollars a year that we're losing in presenteeism, I would submit to you that the United States, at least, we are paying a trust tax and it's a huge tax. A trust dividend is where you built those relationships with your employees where you're able to do things in shorthand. If you take a look how elite groups work, whether that's an elite group of athletes or an, an elite military unit, you will see they are earning a trust dividend. They instinctively trust each other. You, you hear a lot, you know, sometimes you even see it on the TV shows, the idea of I've got your six. And if you think about that, what that means for those of you that are non-military is your six o'clock is directly behind you where you can't see, where your peripheral vision doesn't go. And when somebody says to you, I've got your six, what that means is I have your back. You don't have to worry about turning around to look to see if you're safe because somebody else has that. So think about an environment where you come in every day, where your employees come in every day and they never have to ask whether you as their employer or whether their coworkers and their colleagues have their six. I don't know about you, but that warrants the cockles of my heart. You know, I've seen environments like that where trust is there and I've seen what you can accomplish when you start with that foundation of trust and what you can build on. So that's the takeaway. The takeaway is trust is a gift. It's not a given. The other big takeaway for all of you is that if you are not focusing on and building that third level of trust into your organizational infrastructure, then you are building your business on a foundation of sand and it's going to crumble. Next time on the trust paradigm, we're going to talk about two things that are very important to me, the human resources pyramid. And the second is the concept of congruency and how it fits into the employment relationship. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next time.